Okay, so my colleague has uh, already uh, made the point to you that actually we need to think about portal vein thrombosis in a more sophisticated way. The recent more acute portal vein thrombosis, less than six months, they're a different category. And of course, the hematologists uh, love those because it generates work. And of course, I cannot argue that every patient with any sort of thrombosis actually needs a, um, to be anticoagulated. It's select patients, and that is what is absolutely key. And what we have to try and think about is anticipate complications that are associated with the care of our patients. And of course, yes, the post-transplant patients absolutely are, are those. This is a patient with uh, an established portal vein thrombosis going into the main portal vein. Um, and this is what we encounter in routine clinical practice in screening. We find an ultrasound scan that there's a portal vein gone. You do a, a CT scan because you want to know if they have a cancer or not. And what do you do with it? So you've heard this, the non-serotic portal vein thrombosis, actually it's rare and it's highly likely that the prevalence is overrated. The, it tends to be low level risks and actually the appropriate care is dual care with hematology and hepatology with endoscopy follow-up for varices. The prevalence in, in cirrhosis is probably underestimated. And of course, some of, many of the times when we find these clots, these patients have already deteriorated and become uh, decompensated, or they have an underlying HCC which has been uh, un, undiagnosed. It's quite interesting that there is one really important study where beta blockers have been associated with an eightfold risk of um, developing portal vein thrombosis in cirrhosis. And uh, this is something that probably wor is worthy of, um, of um, further study. So why do we anticoagulate? Well, I won't talk about acute portal th vein thrombosis because we, we've, we've, we've agreed that these are patients that should be uh, anticoagulated. What I would say is if you come across an acute portal vein thrombosis where there's pyeliflebitis, also think about continuing on antibiotics for a, a more prolonged period of time to actually eradicate uh, inflammation from the lining of the wall of the portal vein. So anticoagulation plus antibiotics. In truth, what we are trying to do is preserve transplant options for cirrhotic patients with portal vein thrombosis. And actually, the game is over if they already have cavernous transformation in the portal vein. So we want to target treatment where it's appropriate. Now, my esteemed colleague has actually made a really good argument, and that is that even if you do nothing with some of our patients with established cirrhosis, more than 40% of them will recanalize anyway, doing nothing. What, where the argument is being made for anticoagulation is that if you anticoagulate patients, you can bring this recanalization rate up to 70%. And my belief is that we haven't followed patients for long enough to really understand the benefit of uh, well, maintaining portal vein patency. The other challenge is the plethora of anticoagulants that have come to us as hepatologists. We are used to using vitamin K antagonists, antagonists and, but of course we would like to use the DOAX. There are short onset, fewer food and drug interactions, relatively easy to use, but actually, I don't want to be up in the middle of the night scoping patients either, particularly if you have no reversal agent. And one of the considerations as hepatologists is that of course, as patients with cirrhosis become more sick, the uh, pharmacokinetics of some of these agents uh, vary. So you can look at some of these and the excretion and the metabolism of many of these newer agents is actually uh, mixed between hepatic 
and uh, clearance from the kidney. So if you have really impaired uh, function, dealing with these and using these is not that easy. So the consideration not just about anticoagulation is how to anticoagulate. Vitamin K antagonists versus the DOAX. Um, and, of, and the reality is that although there is no need for drug monitoring, actually these newer agents are not tested in our more advanced child class B and child class C patients. And also, even a consideration for anticoagulation in our patients with liver disease is that as they get progressive disease, they are more likely to, ha to have renal impairment as their ascites increases. And of course, the DOACs are not particularly helpful in that situation. So, the benefits of recanalization, these are the data. Uh, there is, uh, you can see in these um, forest plots, a clear uh, benefit to anticoagulation in terms of recanalization of the portal vein. You, the question, of course, is does it translate to an increased rate of variceal bleeding? The answer is it still favors anticoagulation because you are likely to reduce other endpoints that impact upon uh, the, uh, the patients with chronic liver disease. Improvement of flow in the portal vein means less societies, less SBP, less other complications. As I say, DOAX, cautious. What about DOAX versus vitamin K antagonists, antagonists in terms of uh, uh, recanalization. Well, the DOAX do seem to be more potent as anticoagulants, but, they're, but then again, we're not able to use them in the Charles class B and C, so DOAX certainly have a role. Here's a case. This is a patient who has uh, a MELD score of 16, alcohol-related liver disease, previous three variceal bleeds in the past. They have a clot in the portal vein and extending into the splenic vein, so it's, uh, it's not a complete occlusion of the portal vein, it's a partial occlusion. So anticoagulate or not? Well, and we did. Well, what are the other options? Tips are anticoagulation, well, meta-analysis, you can see that uh, the effect size for tips or anticoagulation is more or less the same. And what about uh, some of the other outcomes in terms of mortality? Well, it still, it favors intervention, certainly. Doing something in some of these patients is worthwhile. Whether it's TIPS or otherwise, that remains to be seen. But I think there is improved mortality in some of these chronic patients. And this is, we, but unquestionably, we're going to need a bit more data. So the guidance, this has been shared with you already. Um, the choice of anticoagulation is important. The question about transplantability is important. Coming back to the case, so we had a case, 50% occlusion of the portal vein, extension into the splenic vein, potential transplant candidate. So on balance, the risk of progression he got anticoagulated. But of course, things can happen even when you anticoagulate these patients with no molecular weight heparin. The disease progressed, and it progressed because he had an underlying HCC. What do you do in that sort of situation? Well, you can change the anticoagulant and optimize it with her hematological colleague. You need to make sure that there, you deal with the tumor if you can deal with it. You may need to consider tips and expedite liver transplantation if they remain within criteria. Otherwise, complications go up. So, we're coming to the end. I would say that actually, when you are thinking about anticoagulation, there is increasing evidence that it is of benefit, but you have to consider the individual patient, the location of the uh, thrombus, and balance the risks and benefits against the other options. Unquestionably, Charles Q, Q A, you can give them anything you want. Charles class B, 
more likely to require low molecular weight heparin and certainly the child class C uh, low molecular weight heparin or uh, warfarin. So I would say anticoagulation potentially useful but for certain patients. Thank you very much.